you gave us a, a very nice sort of historical, the broad view from 300 BC to, to now. Um, there's, there's qu the questions like, you know, you, people want to be diligent if they're going to have quality. Well, yeah, I mean, um, there's some kind of balance that each person has to um, work on for themselves. Right? I think all human beings have a, um, an urge to create and an urge to be an artist and be a philosopher. And, um, but that urge is often squashed by the modern system. Um, and you can recapture that by idleness in your everyday life. Uh, but I don't mean by idleness just you know, giving up and watching television all day. Uh, but I mean something quite active, quite an active process of grabbing hold of your life. So it's like the, you know, the situationist said, um, ne travaillez jamais. Hmm. But they don't mean ne don't do anything. They mean be creative. And so is there a way of being creative in your everyday life? Yeah. Or can you reduce the amount of hours that you sell to somebody else and increase the number of hours that you have for your own voluntary activities? Yeah. Can, can you see how idleness uh, can help... Uh, bring us closer together, because you could also see idleness as something individual, uh, sort of taking care not to, to, to overwork yourself, but where, where is the drive to be more uh, community-minded? Well, the, I think the anti-idol is um, criticized time-wasting. And, um, and that might be in the form of uh, being in the pub or going to parties and things like that. But the pub and the party, they show us that um, you know, people are sociable human beings on the whole. Um, there was uh, Dr. Johnson, who I like, the 18th century writer in England. He said, um, if you want to avoid being depressed or melancholy, then... When solitary, be not idle. When idle, be not solitary. So he mm. actually said, don't be idle when you're on your own, because that will make you depressed. Be idle in company. Um, so, yeah, when idle, be not solitary. So, so, idle so, so when you're on your own, social. Yeah, it's a social it's, thing, yeah. So, so when you're on your own, you should be reading, working, doing something. Um, and then. Uh, when you're uh, idle, you should do it in the company of some other merry fellows. That's, that's, it's not, that's a, a quite another way of looking at idleness, then, is emphasizing the social, social aspects of idleness. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you almost feel like uh, you're intruding on the, on the uh, automobile. Yeah, I know. Well, a small business could be one way of doing that. I mean, you know, you talked about Christiana with the bicycles and stuff. Well, a small business which is properly run and which is not an indulgence, um, which has profit as its aim and um, is going to pay staff and pay some people, uh, is, is, a, is actually a beautiful idea. <laughs> you know, I really like it. Uh, it's incredibly difficult. But um, because at the moment, we're sort of saying, okay, you've either got uh, capitalism in the form of let's all work for big corporations, or socialism, no, let's don't work for the corporations, let's start community projects and cooperatives where no one makes any money and you trade and barter. Mm. But, you know, we d people do need money. Um, so you, you can't really say to an employed person, come and, um, you know, dig my vegetable garden and I'll, I'll give you a potato. It's not very attractive. <laughs> they want to get some money. But there could be, you know, there are ways of, um, I don't know, I mean, the whole idea of the apprenticeship, uh, where you're, you're paid very little um, for seven years, actually. And then at the end of the seven years, you're very, very good at something, like a carpenter or whatever it is. Mm. Um, I have ideas like that, and um, 
Uh, but they should be small computer companies as well. You know, um, they should be small manufacturing companies. One really nice thing in UK, even more in America, is that you're getting these small breweries. So you get uh, there's a kind of trend for craft brewing, craft breweries, and they're really good employers, and that's a great fun place to work. Yes. So, so something does need to happen on the level of actual, you know, cr uh, well, creating real meaningful work for people, um, which actually gives them money. That could be training. I mean, we find w at the Ida Academy, we run courses and they're popular. So you can run training for people who want to come from the city and um, learn skills and they'll pay for a weekend to come and do that. And w we're doing that now with our home in, in Devon in the countryside. So people pay you to come down, spend two or three days with you, and then you teach them something, foraging, uh, the art of wood storage, wood burning, um, keeping chickens, keeping bees or whatever it is, a, 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 an early training course. I think that's a way of starting a small business beyond the community. So w w once the, the chicken people, are, once the uh, chicken society um, has spent a, two or three years of working together and making mistakes and learning, the chicken society could then offer courses and training courses. And then you can employ people, in, people can be employed to do the catering, they can come and clean up the place for you, uh, they can come and help out and be assistants. It's probably good to, to start to think about these things in a different way from just waiting for the government or the big, bus big business to sort it out. Okay, thank you. Enough. Okay, thank you very thank much. You.